I think that, that part of what we have to do is um, continue to work to pull people together. Part of, I think, what is happening in this city is um, we have a council, we have a mayor that's kind of moved off and moved into different areas. And what I want to do is that uh, remind folks that the only way we can move the city forward is, is by uniting, working together, coming together to solve what I consider solvable issues uh, if we unite and work together. Okay. All right, I'm recording. ...that the, the ward represents. I mean, it is a microcosm of the entire city. And part of what I think we have to do is make certain that the issues that we're talking about really uh, connects uh, individuals one to another. For example, everybody is concerned about crime. Um, crime is a major factor in most urban settings, and I think that uh, when we talk about uh, the incidence of crime and the, and the opportunity for crime to exist, uh, it doesn't matter if you're black, white, old, young, rich, poor. Uh, crime is a factor in, in urban communities, and so what we have to do is talk about ways that we can begin to reduce that. And so if you go to the heart of where... Uh, the city is having the majority of its issues, it's around juvenile crime. Why are we having those issues? It's around jobs. It's around job training. It's around uh, good recreational options. If we can solve those issues, then we can reduce crime. Why should folks down in Penn Quarter care about that? Because they want to continue to be able to walk on the street <laughs> and enjoy the, the great restaurants and, and the amenities that, that exist in, in those areas. But that concern is no different than those who would be uh, on the southwest waterfront where those amenities are not, but the area is a little bit more depressed. Um, people want to still live in safe neighborhoods. And so I think that uh, that issue transcend, transcends, uh, like I said, young, old, white, poor, uh, you name it. Uh, that if we can solve that issue and work on it together, I think it will uplift the entire city and, and everyone will begin to feel uh, much uh, better about uh, where we're going in the city. Okay. All right, I'm recording. Seeing yourself as someone who is going to really address the issue of crime in a more aggressive manner than what you feel is being addressed right now. I think so. I think you have to take a holistic approach. It's not just about locking folks up, although we're going to have to do some of that. Uh, the key is making certain that if we decide we're going to incarcerate folks, we got to figure out a logical thing to do to rehabilitate them, to give them opportunities to understand the errors of their ways and try and reintegrate them back into our community. Uh, the other part of what I'm talking about in terms of not only increasing foot patrols and doing something with juvenile crimes and lowering the curfew, um, you've also got to think about the strategy for re-engaging and re-instituting uh, those who were formerly incarcerated. We've got over 4,000 people returning back to the district. Um, Unfortunately, uh, the place where the homeless are located uh, in large numbers is in Ward 6 at Reservation 13 uh, on the campus of D.C. General. Uh, if indeed these folks come home and they have no place to go and we've not planned for them, they're going to end up in our communities. And we've got to figure out exactly what to do with them and what kind of resources they might need. And that means uh, a comprehensive strategy before they're released in order to uh, decide where they're going, what kind of services we're going to provide for them, where they're going to be housed, uh, what kind of training we might be able to offer to them. That's important because if we don't do that, they will end up just on our streets, in our neighborhoods, uh, walking on our streets without anything to do. We cannot have that. And it, it does not make for a safe and um, uh, you know, environment for, for Ward 6 residents. All right, I'm recording. There, there are a number of strategies that I think um, uh, that we tried to implement during the time that I was with the Williams administration. One of those was to identify hotspots. One of those was to increase uh, police patrols. Um, and those strategies seemed to work. Uh, when we began to take uh, officers out of their cars, put them on the streets, actually engaging and walking the beat, getting to know their neighbor, getting to know the area, getting the neighbors to know them, so that everybody knows that um, we're all walking and we're all in this together. If we're just looking at the police to be the only source uh, to, to fight crime, then we're fooling ourselves. It takes a community effort. And the only way we have a community effort is when we have people understanding who lives on their block, 
uh, through block parties or other kinds of engage engagement, uh, orange hat patrols. In fact, I'll be uh, joining folks at uh, 13th and D, uh, 13th and E tonight uh, to actually do an orange hat walk patrol. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, there are those kinds of activities that uh, bring people together, bring them out of their homes, engaging with one another, engaging with the police so that they can then begin to secure their own communities. Now, uh, um, the fact that there was a theft at my home, in front of my home, uh, from my car, um, yes, should I have done something different? Could I have done something different in order to secure my belongings? Sure, I could have. But should I have to is the question. And, and, and I think that's always the question of all of us. Someone who uh, happens to drive home is taking their child out of their car and their car is carjacked uh, by a juvenile. Should they have done something differently? Or is it, is it um, uh, unreasonable to think that we can walk our dogs and not have to worry about being accosted by a group of youth who, for whatever reason, don't have anything to do but rather decide they want to harass or mug or or somehow uh, uh, do bodily harm to individuals who are doing nothing but minding their own business and walking down the streets. We should have the ability to, to walk down without fear of harm. We should be able to sit in our homes and not have to worry about home invasions. Uh, we should be able to do a whole host of things that uh, would allow us to go about our business, living our lives in a free society where we're free from harm, and, and, and the threat of, of, of violence. Okay. All right, I'm recording. Listen, I'm not going to take uh, credit for all of the crime reductions that occurred in uh, uh, our city, but, but clearly the strategies that were implemented there, that the community-based uh, policing that we were implementing during the time that I was serving with uh, Mayor Williams uh, were strategies that work. They're proven to work. Okay. What are statistics? It, Can you give me a few statistics? As uh, well, I mean, I, I, you know, in, 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 in D.C., for example, the crime rate uh, has dropped, you know, some 30, 40 percent. Violent crime or thefts? Uh, or? Vi violent, violent crime mm -hmm. is, is down. Um, uh, certainly murders are down. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is we're seeing an increase, though. I mean, you know, almost a twofold increase in in the, um, the rate of, of crimes of opportunity, burglaries and, and auto thefts and uh, break-ins and that sort of thing. And that's where I think uh, we need to concentrate. So the, the focus I have is, like I said, is putting more street patrol patrols uh, uh, out uh, so that folks get to know who their police officers are. That's one of the strategies that we were going to try and implement this summer with, with our um, Public Safety Committee and our ANC mm -hmm. to try and get neighbors to begin to engage with one another so that they knew who their police were, uh, who, who their police officer is, and, and how uh, to contact them and be in, engage with them, getting people to get involved in the public, uh, in the uh, p patrol service areas, uh, PSA meetings, mm -hmm. and really begin to uh, get to know who their neighbors are on their block. Not just when we have issues, but rather as an ongoing strategy for engagement. Now, you know, one of the other things that I think is important is, is to work on out-of-school, um, after-school programs. We know that that is a huge deterrent for youth uh, in terms of giving them something to do meaningful with their time while they're out of instructional time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and to the extent that they are engaged in either midnight basketball programs, reading programs, um, uh, or even going on field trips out of the neighborhoods and seeing other parts of the neighborhood uh, in our city that they haven't seen before. We have just rich history here and opportunities for folks to really kind of get out and see other parts. If we can just give them an opportunity to, to, to do that even, uh, or even uh, increasing uh, their sports opportunities so that they begin to play one neighborhood with another, their basketball tournaments and that sort of thing that we can do. I think those would be the things that we would uh, seek to implement that I think could make a meaningful difference in terms of reducing the incidence of juvenile crime. But you've been doing that as well as an absolutely, ANC member. Absolutely. In fact, we in our in our own ANC, we've been trying to uh, encourage uh, community groups to apply for grants that we would offer. Uh, that would create juvenile redu reduction strategies, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and even implemented a, a you know a scholarship uh, to to facilitate that. And it, it's really important, I think, 
uh, to let folks know, A, that the resources are available, but B, if they could just collaborate with one another.